Okay, in this video we're going to understand the concept of an energy cascade in turbulent flow. And this is coming from the work of Komogorov. And the idea is that you have a bluff body and you have the flow around this bluff body. In this example, going from left to right. And then in a turbulent flow, you have turbulence, which is produced as a consequence of this flow. And these turbulent eddies are the superposition of a whole range of different sizes of motions. Some very large and some very small. And this characterizes turbulent flow. And what we can do is, if we imagine we take a sample at one point in this turbulent flow, and we measure how much energy each of these eddies has as it passes through this point, then what we have is the following. So we have this graph here, and we have size, so this is, these are large, large to small, so it's possibly the other way around, you might expect it, and we can then chart the amount of energy that each one of these eddies will have. Okay, and it looks something like this. And basically, what this says is the largest eddies, i.e., these ones, have the most energy, and the smallest eddies, i.e., these ones, have very little energy in comparison. And this is um, what basically is referred to as the energy cascade. And usually, we write this as a log, this is a log scale, and then instead of um, large to small, we have um, 1 over L here, where L is the size of the eddy. And we write this as a continuous function like this. Now this is the energy cascade. And what Komogorov said is that you can divide this energy cascade into three areas. We're going to look at this in a bit more detail in the next video. Just to introduce the concept, you have these three areas. And basically... They, they denote three different behaviours. The first one is production of energy. Then there's a transfer of energy from the large scales to the small scales. And then you have destruction. Furthermore, what Komogorov realised was that each of these three areas um, has a, a very different behaviour. And in, in, in the production phase, the behaviour of turbulence depends only on the kinetic energy it has and the dissipation rate it has. In the transfer phase, it only depends on the size of the eddy and again the dissipation rate. And in the destruction phase, it depends on the viscosity of the flow and again the dissipation rate. And you can use these three-dimensional arguments to, to make uh, approximations about the, the size and the scale and the speed of turbulence at each point.